Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Sunday the 16th of January 2022. In today's Millwall news, we have four takeaways from a Millwall's 1-0 loss to Forest. Injuries could change transfer window shopping list as injuries bite again. This is from the londonnewsonline.co.uk, which is South London Press's online website. And it says... Former Mill striker Lewis Graben scored a stoppage time win as Nottingham Forest kept up their promotion push to snare a championship play on place. <clears throat> the experienced forward followed up from close range after Barbie Akowski could only get a hand to Philip Zinganakel's dinked effort. Jed Wallace, the subject of two bids from Forest, missed the match. The attacker had trained earlier in the week, but scan showed a minor muscle tear. H- home run ends. Mill had been unbeaten in five championship games at home, winning three of those, and were left to rue missed chances as they, as they lost in SC16 in the league for the first time since October 16. Their two best chances fell to Ben Thompson and Benicophobia in the second half, the former making the first appearance since late September, horribly miscued a 69th minute chance after good work by fellow substitute Mason Bennett. Bennett also created Phobie's opportunity right near the end of normal time, but Bryce Samder uh, kept his close range effort out. Grabben's 12th goal of the season was a simple one, finished off from virtually on the goal line after Bierkowski was only able to partially deal with Zinkanakel's chip. Uh, injuries don't help. You don't want to look for excuses, but Mill lost Tom Bradshaw and Shea Ojo by the start of the second half. Bradshaw, who had scored in his last five league matches, injured his left knee as he looked to work a shooting chance in the box. The forward who signed a contract extension until the summer of 2024 on Thursday did the ASL, ACL in his right knee at Brentford in t- November 2018. Bradshaw's situation will become clearer after a scan, but manager Gary Rowett uh, revealed the striker heard something pop which doesn't sound like it will be bring good news. Ojo also needed an extended spell of treatment in the first period and made way for Thompson at the interval. Both players had been in good form of late, so it made the two early enforced changes even more of an headache for Rowett. Whenever Mill looked to be on the verge of a clean bill of health, they then suffer a fresh bay of injuries. Uh, Ryan Leonard, Dan Ballard, George Savon, Jed and Wallace also missed a match too. No Jed again. Jed Wallace's last appearance in the Mill Shop was a 2 1 defeat at Peterborough on December 11. So often he has been the player to produce that moment of quality to help make sure the ball ends up in the back of the net. You felt that Saturday would have been the perfect kind of match for him with plenty of space to exploit as the two teams, knowing the draw would not be of much use with ground to make up in the playoff zone, both pressed for a winner in an open and entertaining second period. There are plenty of fans who felt his absence at a weekend was convenient, not facing a club who are big admirers and have tried to land him in this window, but Millwall were adamant that he had a scan which revealed a minor muscle tear. And Jed Wallace has uh, commented on that himself on, on Twitter, uh, saying um, these things happen, um, and he didn't duck out of the match, so... There you go. Uh, trading places. Millwall were looking to bring in an attacking midfield in this window. The seen offers rejected for Derby's Louis Sibley and Fortuna Sitar design Fleming. But Bradshaw's injury, if it is the worst case scenario, could mean that striker is added to that shopping list. John Daddybod Barson has been in so far out of the first team pitcher this season that the Lions seem likely to still be perfectly happy for the Icelandic international to move on, provided any interest in the club pay a sizable chunk of his wages. Matt Smith has made just six championship starts this season, the last of those in a 1-0 win over Reading on November 2nd when he was replaced at the break. The big target, target man only has six months to run on his terms and has also attracted interest. Now you wonder if Mill would have to do business in before they countenance Smith aired and out of the exit door. Rowett's other options are to put Bennett or Wallace, provided he doesn't leave before the deadline, as a far Phoebe's partner. If they do strengthen in that position, a loan might be the easiest way to find a short-term fix. Uh, no, the easiest way to find a short-term fix would be to recall Isaac Loffy from his loan and play him. He literally plays the same kind of way as Tom Bradshaw plays. It's literally like for like. So that would be the easiest way. Um, so there you go. Those are the four takeaways. Um, piece that South London Press does every week. Now we move on to this. Now this is from the the website Voitbol International, which is www.vi.nl. It's a 
Dutch website, which has been translated by Microsoft Edge so that we can read it. And it's about Zion Fleming. And he spoke after the game. Um, they played somebody, I don't know who they played. Uh, Fleming wants English adventure, but my opinion doesn't really matter. Zion Fleming, oh, they played AZ out one, they lost 2 1. Uh, Zion Fleming is happy to make the switch to Mill FC, but Fortuna Sittard is holding back a transfer with a 23 year old attacking midfielder. The first bid from London was turned down. It seemed that Fleming has to put another English adventure out of his mind. Uh, Mill ha uh, has reported to Fortuna, Fleming told ESPN. Uh, what have they offered? Let me leave myself out of here. Uh, the championship is a nice step for me. That that was it last summer with Nottingham Forest. Then I on, honestly indicated that I wanted to go there. Mule is also a nice option, but you know how it went last summer. My opinion doesn't really matter. So it seems he's a bit upset as well. He wants to leave, but they won't let him leave. Um, just as Forest previously could not meet Fortuna's requirements, Mill now also knows the Amsterdammer cannot be easily picked up. Fleming still has a contract until mid-2024 without a limited transfer fee. Oh, he's staying here. We are all going to lie down for it, said Captain Ben Reenstra after the game against AZ Alkmaar. Uh, we don't have a wide selection yet. Up front, we have guys who score goals and can make it difficult for everyone, including Fleming. And the coach, Shores Holdy, joked before the game about the importance of Fleming. He definitely doesn't want to lose his player. Uh, we tied him up. He can't leave the stadium. Tonight he sleeps here, Alty said with a wink. If there is a lot of money, then I also know how it works. As a trainer, you look at the short term. We desperately need Zion. As far as I'm concerned, he stays here, no matter what is offered. But it's not that simple in football. And you can see where they are now. They're um, 17th in the table. I think there's 20 teams in the league. Well, there might just be 18. Yeah, I think there might be 18. So, yeah, not looking too good for them. They are set to go down. And that is the end of that story. So there you go. So they're not backwards in coming forwards uh, in the Dutch leagues. They they speak what's on their mind. And he's saying that he wanted to leave last last season. He wanted to go to Nottingham Forest. Well, he wanted to go to England Championship. And then he's saying, oh, I want to still want to. Well, another championship is coming to me team's coming for me I wouldn't mind leaving as well Mill were alright they're in the championship uh, but I, it doesn't matter what I think because the club ain't willing to sell me so what can I do and even his captain the captain of the team said well he's, he's he's staying here he ain't going nowhere so they're all very open about what they're saying there um But yeah, it seems he does want to leave. Which is good for us. But So, anyway, we're going to move on now. We're going to move on to the stats. So if you're not interested in that, thank you for watching. Peace out. And for those of you still here, we carry on. So this is the from experimental361.com. It's the XG of the game over the length of the 90 minutes. And you can see here. We kept them really quiet in the first half. They didn't have a shot until the 20th minute. And then they didn't have another one until about the 40th minute. And they had a little flurry at the end. Uh, the end of the first half was actually our quietest period. From about the 22nd minute. Which will probably be after Bradshaw went off. So since after Bradshaw went off we didn't have a shot again in the rest of that first half. Because the blue line is flat. And you can see here as well. If you go into the second half. And you look. To the 75 line. The 75th minute line. Not in the forest. Suddenly start going up. And up and up and up and up. Now what happened there. Well on the 73rd minute. They brought on an attacking substitute. Zinkanakal. Who helps get their goal in the end. In the 91st minute. But they made a change that made a change. And it's surprising looking at this and, and how bad their first half was that they didn't make it at half time. Like the Bristol City um, 
Giza did and, and won the game for them. But you can see at the end, we went for it. We were going for it as well. We didn't lie down. We didn't try and defend for that nil-nil draw. Uh, which probably cost us in the end because Malone throwing the ball to, to a phobie. Him getting caught on it because we were attacking as well. We were going for it. And what is that's what you want. That, that is what you want. But we had chances to win that game and we didn't win them. Um, but um, Biakowski made a n number of saves to keep us in this game and we just need the strikers to put one in but um, just didn't happen today so the XG was 1.7 to Millwall and 2.8 to Nottingham Forest um, Graben had an XG of it on his own of 1.1 .1, which is basically he should have scored one goal and he did and he always scores against us since he's left us um, yeah he does so moving on now to infogold.net and they give the extra 1.46 to 3.77 a lot different there you can see here the substitutions that were made so yeah the 73rd minute is they make one change and then they start kicking on and we will look at the shot map from this website because this is what I like from this website and there you can see our shots from the whole 90 minutes of the game. Someone over here is taking a shot. Scott Malone, injury time, okay. Uh, our two best chances, that was a phobie. Point blank range, he hit the goalkeeper. And then Murray Wallace on the 55th minute. That one, was that a Ben Thompson one? That's Scott Malone, 11 minute. Um, so there you go. But let's have a look at the f first half. So not trying to get things going on this left hand side here first half Phoebe Malone Murray Wallace Hojo it's quite busy going down that left hand side um, let's have a look at Forest what were they doing so there first half not a lot going on for them they had, did have two decent chances Yates on 43 and grabbing at the end of the first half but when we switch to the second half, you can see we have our two best chances in the second half. But apart from that, not much going on. But look at that. Look at that for Forrest. The goal that they scored is literally right, right on the line. They had two other chances, Yates and Yates. And, Yates. and then Zink and Knuckle right at the end. And then they had a whole host of other not so good quality chances. But they had... You can see, and then when we look down at the fairness rating, was that a fair result? Ninety-six point oh eight. Uh, yeah. Well, when you look at the chances, us versus them, which team deserved to win that game? Team that created the better chances and more chances. So there you go, and it happened. We were, we would. A whisker away from getting out of that with a nil nil draw and that would have been a good result but it was not to be so let's move on to whoscored.com and here you see the match report Mill were effectively creating goal scoring opportunities through individual skill we're effectively creating goal scoring opportunities from the flanks but we're poor at finishing we're caught offside often and here you go not in the forest and I'm gonna point to there attack through the middle had a high shot frequency when in possession and favoured free balls. And if you look on the right hand side, you see top five rated players are all Nottingham Forest players. That speaks volumes there, doesn't it? Now here's the attempts uh, 13 to 24. Nearly double the amount of shots that we had, they had. 10 to 18 open play, 3 to 6 set pieces. And they only scored once, and that's down to. Bar and Danny McNamara keeping us in it, and that, that gives them a conversion rate of four. And we go through um, the attack sides, shot directions. So we were, f for some reason, going down that left side. Maybe that was a plan. Um, they saw something in previous games that Nottingham Forest played. They were trying to do something now. I don't know. 
um, shot zones, action zones, and player positions. And here, if you look at the Nottingham Forest, so we were playing basically, it looks like 3 4 2 1. What I want to show you here is Nottingham Forest packing that middle of the park again, trying to take advantage of the gap between the midfielders in the middle and the players are playing more attacking. Trying to pack that midfield. And again, we keep getting done by that other teams coming to us and packing that midfield and overrunning us. And we, that's where we're losing the game. So defenders can only do so much. We've got to try and win the game in the middle of the park. Um... But there you go. So let's have a look at some of the player ratings. So here's the match events. Not a lot going on there. I only made one change. And it changed the whole game. Um, we made two changes that were enforced. And what I wanted to highlight before we get into the situation here is who was on the bench. So Ben Thompson on the bench. Mason Bennett. Keithton Beld, uh, Matt Smith, Long, Mahoney, Burry. Uh, there's no defender on the bench. There is literally no defender on the bench. Yes, so what happened there? Where's Alex Piss? Is he injured? Uh, was he one of the ones who had the COVID test and then he didn't train and then Gary Wright didn't put him on the bench because he didn't train Hayden Muller's come back from St Johnson has that gone through yet and the paperwork gone through I think they I'm not sure if they have to transfer his registration from Scotland back to England but why was he not on the I know he's not been playing so he's probably not match fit but come on how can you be a championship team and go into a game with seven substitutes is it seven Seven substitutes and no defenders. This is Mickey Mouse stuff. Put put half put half a penny on the bench. You like you you grandstanding a couple of weeks ago about having Zach Lovelace on the bench. Put some put a defender on the bench. Do something. Why is there no defender on the bench, literally? That literally makes no sense. But then you have Mahoney and Burry, who basically play similar roles. Why are both of them on the bench? Where's the defender on the bench? Anyway, I'm sure we'll find out uh, as the week goes on. Hopefully someone uh, in the press will ask him why there was no defender on the bench and we'll find out. It's because Alex Pierce missed training and he wasn't match fit. Well, he's been on the bench all season, of course he's not going to be match fit. Um, so if you look at the top on, of each thing by the club badges you can see the average player rating 6.65 for Millwall, 7.34 for Nottingham Forest. That is a huge gap on this website that is a huge huge gap um, just under a whole point which is basically 10% uh, yeah quite quite the gap and here you can see it's confirmed 3421 we were playing uh, let's move on to C so these are the player ratings, Lewis Grabham, man of the match, uh, just beating Cook, Steve Cook, uh, their defender. For us, it was, it's between Biakowski and Cooper, Jake Cooper. A bit harsh for Danny McMurray, uh, watch, watching, uh, watching the game back, he was playing quite well. Uh, he come over for some reason past, I think it was Hutchinson, and he was further forward on the front post, defending that there. Uh, I don't know if that's something that's obviously something they worked on for him to be over there but seemed to work he was in the right place at the right time 
Um, so let's move on now to shots. So we've seen 13 to 24. Um, literally, yeah, the whole everyone in the forest had a shot basically, except for Colback, Warrell, and the, and the keeper. They they were all over it, shooting on sight. Uh huh. And for us, it was a phobie, Malone, Murray Wallace. Definitely trying to come down this left hand side. Possession wise, actually not that much difference, which is un which is weird. Because it's normally we normally don't worry about getting possession. Uh we let them have the ball and we just attack them and get it over with and then they usually come back at us from the back and that means the opposition have more more possession than us, but it's basically fifty fifty here. Um, and for us, it was Billy Mitchell on the ball, George Evans, and Cooper and Hutchison. So, moving on to passing. So, Bukowski's kicking very good today. 64%, that is good. That is good. That always, I don't know if that was long ball kicking or what. Uh, we'll we'll find out about that later. Mahophobi ninety percent accuracy. So he played the whole game. So that's very good for him. Uh, Billy Mitchell eighty nine as well. That is very good. Um, yeah, everyone very good there except for Hutchison. So our passing was a lot better. Um, yeah. Dribbles nine to seventeen. Okay, aerials one sixteen to twenty. Mhm. Mm okay, tackles fifteen to twenty. So we got out tackled at home, grabbing with two. Hey, Billy Mitchell with three for us. Murray Wallace with three. Hutchinson with no tackles. Corners seven to seven. Malone taking them all. Um, okay. I thought Ojo, when Ojo took took the corners um, the other game, I thought he did all right. Um, obviously he went off at half time. Dispossessed twelve to nine. So having the ball taken off of you, you can see having that midfield packed out by them. Everyone in our midfield have had the ball taken off of them. They got overrun in midfield. So let's have a look now at player stats uh, in table form. And you can see here Mills, uh, highly highest rated player. Bart Bikowski, 7.31. And yeah, I would probably agree with that. He will, probably was our best player. Um, kept us in the game. Probably could have been three or four to them, which we should have been probably three two or three three. But we missed a couple of point blank uh, chances that were hit straight at the keeper, and we'll demonstrate that by let's have a look at touches first. Who had the most touches? Hutch, Cooper, Malone, George Evans. Okay. And then we'll go to shots and shots on target. So you can see here Benekafobi, four shots, three shots on target. Didn't get that goal. Didn't get that goal. He had four shots, three of them were on target, and didn't get in the net. Was off, was he? I don't know. A bit unlucky. But we had six these six players having shots. And how many on on target? Three of them. So only six shots on target. Zero goals. Let's let's see Forest. So they had nine players having shots. Nine different players. And they had five different players having shots on target. They had three Four, five, six, seven shots on target and got one goal. So that tells you 
why Bart Piekowski was our man of the match. Because they had seven shots on target and six of them were either saved or, or defended. Let's move on to defense. It's most tackles, interceptions, George Evans, okay. That's interesting. And eight players with interceptions. So, okay. That is interesting. Clearances, Jay Cooper with five. So you can see why he got high rating there. He's the second highest after the bar. Two two tackles, two interceptions, five clearances, three block shots. Pretty decent. Um I don't know why Danny McMahon's was so low. Uh uh, I don't know. Ratings wise, let's have a look. So Mason Bennett there being fourth. And he came on twenty seventh minute, so he had 60 odd minutes on the pitch so you expect he's going to get a, decent, a higher score than Bradshaw and he did and Ben Thompson lowest rated player 6.1 having 45 minutes and Ojo having the first 45 of those minutes uh, 6.47 it's not that much better than Ben Thompson but better nonetheless passing wise Let's see what happened to Bart. Oh, here we go. Here's why Bart scored so high. Not only did he do some decent saves, but let's have a look at this first. Long ball, accurate long ball. 19 long balls, 10 of them accurate. For Bart Biakowski, that is premium, premium. He's never that good. His kicking's never that good. He's, he's, for some reason, it was this week, even with probably no one to, probably to aim for. When Matt Smith's on the pitch, he... he it's usually this good, but for some reason, uh, was good this good anyway. So there you go, impressive. Um, Sean Hutchinson nine and two, Malone eight and two, Cooper six and two. Uh, Daniel McNamara four and zero, and that probably explains the low score there. Uh huh. Billy Mitchell four and three. So there you go. Let's go to passes. So most passes, Hutchinson, Cooper, Evans, Billy Mitchell. In terms of passing accuracy, you've got Billy Mitchell at 89.4. But for 47 passes, that's very good. That is very good. Um, and Benek Fobi, 89.7 off of 29. So not as good as Billy Mitchell, who got nearly the same accuracy off of probably... 30% more passes than a phobie. Barbie Kelsey, 64%. Okay. Crosses and accurate crosses. Was there anyone to cross to? So Scott Malone with the corners there. That's bumped up his crosses. He's had 10. Everyone else is 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. And one, and one of them was accurate. <laughs> Um. Yeah. Can someone else take a corner? Um. Danny McMara. Someone. Anyone? Don't know. Mason Bennett. Um. Hutchinson. Someone. Can anyone take a corner? Because Malone clearly can't. Anyway, so there you go. On that note. I think we're going to leave it there. Um, pretty shit result. We tried to win it, so you can't really argue with that. We did try to win it, and it will be hypocritical to say, oh, we should have played for the draw, but it, a draw would have been a good result in terms of first clean sheet for a long while. We only have five clean sheets so far this season, but we needed to win that game. We tried to win that game. We had the chances to win that game. We were defending and goalkeeping very well enough to win that game. 
and we didn't just win. We didn't win the game, and we didn't draw the game. We lost the game. So there you go. We go again. Blackpool on Saturday. Blackpool away. Let's see how we do. Surely that's a must-win game. Can't be losing to them. Thank you for watching.